What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Sup Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi. This is episode 117, 117, and I'm here with my boys. I got Chris Chaney to my left. What up? And then uh, directly above me, we've got Lawrence Deloach. What's up? Here we go. Everybody's here, baby. How are we doing today, boys? Doing great, buddy. As a black man, I'm angry and I'm upset, and George Bush doesn't care about black people. It's okay. <laughs> That's true. Start off strong. That's good. That's good. Glad we got that out of the way. Got that out of the way. <laughs> yep. George Bush definitely does not care about hi- black people. That's not hype. That's just, that's vintage George Bush hate right there. That's there, good. there you go. There you go. All right, boys. What do we want to talk about today? There's like not much. We don't feel like we need to really, you know, there's not really much sneaker news right now. So we thought maybe we'd just kind of keep it up on the current events. Not too, too much distraction, you know? Yeah, distraction being the key word there. Uh, originally quoted by Kyrie talking about the NBA. He doesn't think that the NBA should come back because it's a distraction from the shit that uh, is being reformed civilly outside. Um, and I think we, us three, uh, as a collective podcast here, agree that sneakers are also a distraction. Mm-hmm. Um, there hasn't been a ton going on. Um, and any further delve deeper into that is like what Kyrie said, a distraction. So, again, we're just going to keep it light. We're chilling. We're chilling. We're all happy to see each other. That's always yeah, man. good. But, um, you know, besides that. So, yeah. yeah. So, basically, I mean, for, you know, a lot of listeners and people who, are, you know, follow the, the NBA, you know, there was talks that the season would resume uh, the end of July and the season would go until basically October. Uh, they would put the players in a bubble in Orlando. Um, they would have 22 teams, I believe. Um, and when it originally happened, the first thing I went through my head was, yeah, this is dope. Fucking basketball's back. Let's, let's start, you know, let's get hyped. And, uh, Kyrie Irving, uh, he, you know, he was leading a group of, you know, players and, um, and they're now they're having second thoughts. And I want to know, guys, what do you guys honestly think about what's going on right now? I think that the racists should not be allowed to enjoy basketball. I don't think you can, you know, that's just not fair. Fuck them. I mean, like like you, Lawrence, I, I was pretty excited for not even just basketball, but just some level of normalcy to come back into life. Like, uh-huh. watching TV right now is so weird without sports, without anything new without any level of production and on anything, it's just like reruns of old shit. You can't even go to the movie theater for new movies and stuff. So like something mm-hmm. like the NBA, I was like, oh shit, yeah. But no, they're right. It's a distraction. It the is. less that we have um, that's been taken away from us, given back to us from the COVID thing, I think the more we can focus on the things like social reform that we need to focus on in this time. Well, it's interesting with the NBA because I feel like out of all the professional leagues, the NBA – is the one that has the most, uh, I feel like black fans, like, you know, young, uh, the hip fans, you know, the, the NFL is, it, it definitely attracts, you know, it attracts minorities, but I feel like it's still a, at the core of it, it's still a Southern sport for yes, you know, yeah. white men to mm-hmm. flourish and enjoy it. And we saw as, you know, with the protests going on, even, you know, three, four years ago, where it was, met with a lot of resistance and because I feel like the owners there's you know there's only I believe maybe one or two minority owners in the NFL I, I know off the top of my head it's the guy in Jacksonville uh, uh the Shad Shad Khan he's like uh that's the Jacksonville owner. I'm not sure if there's any other minorities but um when you look at the NBA it's it's been a player's league you know players yeah. have always been able to somewhat express themselves whether it's, you know, the I can't breathe tease or, you know, players kneeling, you know, and, and it's never really been met with any resistance by the commissioners of the league. Um, this is very interesting because I think there's, you know, there's two issues here with the NBA that, that need to be addressed. One, obviously, the elephant in the room uh, is, is COVID. I mean, a lot of players do not want to uh, risk their careers, their lives. I mean, you, you've had the game taken away. Imagine you're, you're mid-season in March or towards the end of the season, and then you, it's taken away from you for months, and now you got to come back and risk your, 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 your career. I mean, career injuries could happen in, in things like this, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other, obviously, the other thing is, you know, you, you put these players in a bubble in Florida, which is now like a hotbed of cases with COVID, 
um, that that also I think is 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 met with some drawback because once again, I mean these are these are people. I mean, you saw one of the NBA players, Carl Anthony Towns, his mother passed away due to yeah. complications from COVID. So I'm sure that's definitely in the back of their mind. They don't want to take that to their family. And and then obviously the second thing is the uh, what's going on in America with you know with uh, social justice reform and 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 black men being murdered on, uh, by police officers that are designated to serve and protect them and i think they definitely bring up a very valid point of course if if you bring back the nba um you know i'm not saying that everyone's going to stop marching because i think that's that's obviously not going to happen but at the same time it's definitely going to be able to take some heat off of the marches it's like oh shit we got lebron back on the court you know chasing you know another ring or you got you know, Giannis Antetokounmpo or uh, the guys in, in, with the Clippers, like everyone is able to then focus on other things, which um, I think, you know, it, it's – the NBA has shown that they are the leader in terms of what needs to be done socially. Absolutely. No, that's absolutely a fact. The NBA was the first to especially let the players, and as an organization, let them kind of speak for themselves, the writing on the sneakers, the mm-hmm. I can't breathe shirts, all that shit. Um even even shutting down even shutting down the league when uh, when COVID yeah. was was ramped, they were the first. They were like the ones that were like, "Fuck it, we're shutting down." And I think that caused the domino effect within most other organizations. Now, granted, they all would have had to give in eventually because just the way the, the country was shut down, and you know you couldn't play any professional sports. But the NBA was one of the first ones to just say, "It's it's we're shutting down." Yeah. Um. Everyone wants to have a flu game, but no one wants a literal flu game, you know? Oh, well, totally. I mean, and, and that's what also I think is, is, is a problem, too, where, you know, imagine it's, you know, the NBA playoffs and, and then five guys on your team test positive for COVID. Yeah. So now your entire, you know, maybe five of your top eight or nine guys are, are out for the series, you know? We've, mm-hmm. we've always given, especially in the NBA, when there's a lockout short in season or something that's disputable, whether it's an injury in the playoffs, we always want, I mean, granted it's a championship, but it's always been that it's an asterisk championship. Yeah. You can go yeah. back to the Spurs when the lockout short in season happened, do the same thing. I mean, there's the, you know, the year that the Warriors won when Kevin Love and Kyrie were both hurt. It, you know, we, we love to appoint an asterisk next to the championship. And I couldn't imagine a situation where it was the finals and, three of the star players were just out. Yeah. It's crazy. I hope they don't bring it back. I hope that there's some some sort of compromise where they can just go, all right, let's cool down. We'll just take this year off. We'll figure something out. Because like you said, it's not not worth an asterisk in any level. Uh, Sort of to go back to the NFL, though, I guess they're still planning a full season. Yes, they do have some advantages, obviously, because obviously the the season doesn't start until September. Yeah. Uh, that's that's you know the but uh, also this is once again this is an owners league, so those owners are going to be like dance, and the players in the NFL don't have the same. Uh, they don't have the same. Uh, what's the best way to say? It? They don't have the same pull as the they don't have influence i guess yeah they're yeah. not yeah. able to because the nfl players are basically you know their contracts are you know it's a lot of a lot of unguaranteed non-guaranteed money with the nba yeah. it's like these guys are they get paid more did you see it, that you nfl know, video though of the players yes i did which was very uh which is very powerful i think a lot of it and someone said this and i and i 100 percent agree with them i think the reason why the nfl was able to take such a hard stance was because basically their golden boy patrick mahomes was in that video yes exactly yeah. that's exactly what i thought because without mahomes it's a quarterback thing which sucks because yeah. there's not many minority quarterbacks and it's looked as as a white role and it's looked at as the leader of the team it's looked at mm-hmm. a bunch of things and patrick mahomes being I don't want to say like the new Brady, but we'll say like the new focus, mm-hmm. the new young potential star of the uh, NFL quarterback regime. Mm-hmm. Being black, that they wouldn't have donated that shit if Patrick Mahomes was not in that video. That's just my guess. I, I think I think I think at the end of the day, I think you have to look at like every, no one wants to be on the wrong side of this. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So it's either you, you are you are with the movement or you are against it. And I think the NFL obviously realized, like, 
like the movement is a lot different than it was four years ago. It's either fuck you, yeah. you're with us, or or you're, you're you're fuck you, you're not with us, or fuck you, you know what I mean? Just in general. Well, I, I shouldn't have said that, but fuck you, you're but, not. Yeah, no, we get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I feel like I feel like with Mahomes being a league MVP, a Super Bowl MVP, the face of the fucking friend, like this kid is a prodigy. They had to move a lot swift, more swift than they probably would have. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is good. I, I, all right, so hey, let me ask you guys a question. At what level do you not respect the, like, the hashtag BLM? Because we know some of this shit is bullshit. Like, I respected the players making that video, but I almost didn't respect the NFL, like, donating any money because it's like, all right, so where were you for Kaepernick? This is getting ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You literally shut this dude out, and now because it's the thing to do, you're with it. Like, but you caused this whole thing. The NFL was with us from the beginning. They would, they would, we would not be in this crazy state. Um, I, I definitely feel like it's a, you know, definitely met with a lot of uh, side eyes in terms of how the NFL definitely how they moved in regards to it now. Because, like you said, I mean, it was, you know, 2017, 2000, you know, 2017. People, you know, they, the NFL was like, if you kneel, we're gonna, you know, we're yeah. not gonna show it. Yeah. We're, we're gonna fine you. So now, because like I said, no one wants to be on the wrong side of things. Yeah, it's a it's a, a quick swift. It's not. It's not that it's they don't want to be on the wrong side. It's not profitable to be on the right the wrong side. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I mean when I say yeah, the wrong yeah. side. It's like you you you're on the wrong side now. People are gonna boycott you. Advertise dollars like it's a do, it's a dollars thing. That's why you see it now with all these, you know, you see all these uh these racist videos. And I mean, in the next morning, the company that they work for is like, uh, we do not condone the actions of, you know, because they do not want to be on, they will fire you in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. You know I mean? I mean, I think this is a great segue to uh, the Adidas thing, the, bro- yeah. the protest going on over there. Um, so Julia Bond, I think that's her name, Julia Bond. She um, wrote a memo that got somehow to the higher ups at Adidas. Um, and now, uh, because she put her name on it and was very vocal on social media and, you know, said, hi, that I wrote that. Mm-hmm. Um, people are standing behind her now that there's a face and there's protests at the Adidas uh, campus. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, I can't, I can't speak to really anything racial in the workplace being so white. Um, I can't imagine uh, some of the things that she's claiming some of the employees have said about uh, people of color and like being on time and stuff and just sitting there as the only black employee going like, yo, what the, f-? like, I'm here. What are you guys talking about? Like, you can't speak. So it is cool to see action being took. I mean, again, I, I'm so, I can't speak to really any of that uh, truth to her power, but um, I mean, do you, how did you guys feel? Uh, do you guys feel differently about Adidas now? Or do you feel any differently about um, some of these uh, people speaking out? Is, I mean, do you guys have any thoughts? Uh, it's tough. I see, like, when you see stuff that, like, gets, it gets past the Adidas office, like that dude coming in with, like, Confederate clothes, like a Confederate flag on his clothes, and she was like, yo, I have a problem with this, and they were like, yeah, it's just artistic or whatever. I think, like, that's, that's kind of an issue, and I think that, I'm, I'm happy that they're addressing these issues in the company, but I think this is, like, this is just another, like, piece of the puzzle of, everything that has to be reformed right now, you know, like everything, like in most of the jobs that I had growing up, there was always somebody making Mm -hmm. some jokes about Mm -hmm. race, you know, it's always happens. And I feel like that's just like, I don't expect any different from the Adidas office. I don't expect anything from like, I, I expect, I want higher expectations for them, but like, it doesn't surprise me that this shit is happening. It needs to, this is like a full countrywide reform that needs to go on. You know, yeah, I've I've gotten word from a couple different people at a couple of these different offices that the effort to make sure they're not saying or doing anything incorrectly is at a heightened level that's so high that it's almost going to be detrimental to the office life within these separate offices. Um, so I mean, it's cool that Julia did that. I mean, I don't know if you want to speak to anything about it, but I'm just happy that you know there's a someone put a face to the complaint and then she got backing. That's the main thing is that people stepped up with her. Yes. Yeah, you, I mean, you see that at a lot of these, uh, 
a lot of these offices or these, you know, these big corporations where there's so much racism that goes on. And a lot of the times it's, it's met with a, oh, don't take it so serious or, you know, or, or your complaints are swept under the rug. Mm-hmm. But now and, and with everything that is going on, I feel like, and I've said this, I've gone on record. I, it, this is the me to error for racists. Like it is mm-hmm. now, if you said something racist, you know, in 2014, now I, I am empowered and I do not have to feel like I, my voice is not going to be heard. And I'm going to say that. I, I, and I feel like that's, that's a good thing because at the end of the day, um, I mean, as you know, I think, you know, there's not, I think every minority, black, Asian, Latino, like have experienced some form of racist behavior from in, in their workplace whether it's yeah. the good old boys where you, you know, where they, you know, they know you're the minority and they freeze you out. They try to make things hard for you. They, they're rude. You, you see them in the hallway and, and they, you, you may say hello. They roll their eyes at you. They don't, you know, things like that, that are just really <clears throat> prevalent in workspaces, I think needs to, to change. And um, I think the more that, you know, racist behavior gets called out and, you know, people start losing things that they, value whether it's their you know their jobs or whatever i think we will start to see some sort of change but i hope ra- so racism is is the biggest ball game in town and it's the biggest money maker and it ain't going nowhere so um just got to understand that too yep i i i don't know how it's going to be possible within a workspace that pulls so much from black culture or other minority culture cuz so Adidas, for example, is mm-hmm. a German company. They're white as shit. They're as white as fucking BMW. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're Volkswagen white. Mm-hmm. So when you, uh, and this goes for many different types of uh, offices and products that you create, right? If you're not originally from that culture, but you want to cater to a culture, uh, it's tr- you need to have someone within the, like you need to hire someone at least from within that culture that can speak to or lead people in the right way. Because mm-hmm. the Confederate flag shit, the, the POC being late comment shit, it's all from ignorance from hiring. Mm-hmm. How can you make a black appealing shoe when you don't have a black person designing? That's correct. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So, I yeah, mean, yeah. I think a lot of people are going to uh, over compensate. Which I'm cool mm-hmm. with. Yeah, like, all right, so if you want to, I, I, I was reading Adidas is going to change their uh, their hiring structure where yeah. they're going to put more um, minorities in, in job seats, which is cool. Um, I mean, don't, like, overdo it. You know what I mean? Don't do it the, in the wrong way. I hope they do it correctly where you pick the best people, but you also fulfill quotas. Like, it's such a weird thing. You know what I mean? Because normally, like, when we're booking shows, we want to book the funniest people, right? Yeah. But then you have to have a diverse lineup. But I, I, I feel like I feel like a lot of times, and this goes this this honestly goes to say in terms of how America is set up, that minorities never have the opportunity to even like get their foot in the door, if that makes yeah. sense. So a That's lot of the true. times they've never been set up to even yeah. be in those positions. <clears throat> like I just looked at NASCAR where NASCAR <clears throat> made the whole the whole decision to ban the Confederate. Uh, yeah, and people friend. lost their shit. And people lost One guy shit. retired and shit. But my, anyway. my my biggest problem is you're you're yeah you 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 may quote unquote lose a couple people that you know are NAS, NASCAR fans. But at the end of the day, what are you doing to get younger black kids the opportunity to become NASCAR drivers? Because unfortunately, it goes from the day that you're born where a lot of these kids will never have the opportunity to learn how to become a NASCAR driver when they're five years old, six years old, seven, when they're at that formulative stage because they don't have the resources. And that goes to say the same thing at these companies that are like, yes, we're going to try to, we're going to have more uh, black people being hired, but it's like, okay, you have to figure out how to get these people started at, you have to groom them from when they're young. Yeah, that that starts with the education. Yes, because I feel like a lot of a lot of white people have the the they've been groomed from the beginning to to be in successful positions. The same thing I you know, and I, I can speak for it in terms of comedy. It's like you look at when you look at a young white comic who is 
solid, but they still have things to work on and they are groomed to, they are allowed to grow and be put in clubs and they're given late night spots and they're, they're given all these spots to fuck up. And then they finally get somewhere. And then you look at a black comic who is young, who is solid, has room to grow. He is literally pushed to the, to the side for these white comics to continue to grow. And then unfortunately that black comic does not get an opportunity until they are 40 years in the game. And then at that point they are, it is too late. And I think mm-hmm. that is what I'm trying to say from, in terms of Adidas, NASCAR, Look at whoever, you, that's what I'm saying. Look so it's, it's, it's almost like you have to, unfortunately, black people have to go 10, they have to be 15 steps beyond, ahead of the game. They have to be so great that they're after years of proving themselves that then they're given these opportunities where white people are given these same opportunities and they are given the opportunity to grow. And I think that's what kind of Adidas and all these other companies need to figure out how to focus on. It's yeah. getting these kids the opportunity. It's like tennis. Yeah. How many black kids do you really see playing tennis? Not many because many don't have the opportunity. They don't have the, the, the financial freedom to, 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 to train to, to be tennis players. And when they do, then they're fucking, they're put through the ringer because like Serena and Venus were, it, it's, it, it's, it's so, it's so, it's yeah. like a, a head spinner. It really is. Yeah, because it's like, where do, you, where do you start? Do you start with the jobs that are currently available or do you set up for the future and just call this fucking decade, this generation a wash, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, it's tough to, to make a decision on that. And, I mean, getting jobs to minorities will help for now. Um, maybe we'll start to see a change in the future, but I think it all starts with the education. Hi, I'm running I for mean, president, by the way. <laughs> yeah, look for president. <laughs> it's, it, uh, I mean, at least there, there is shining light on all this. Like Nike is giving um, June 19th, Juneteenth. Um, they're giving all their employees a paid holiday off. So that's like a national holiday, which is good to see. I don't know how they, use, they do MLK, but some places I've worked, they're just like, you don't get Martin Luther King Day off. And I'm like, okay, all right, yeah, fine. So at least it's good that stuff, stuff like this gets recognized. Um, that, that I just also, hope that it. Wait, no, go, go, go. No, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Go ahead. No, I just, I just really hope that Adidas doesn't try to like overdo it with like hiring a bunch of wrong minorities. I don't say wrong in the idea that like the wrong ethnicity or what. There's, you should hire the right people for the job. Just like what you were saying, open it more for more minorities. Like, don't just hire the white people. You know what I mean? But make sure it's good for it because then it's gonna reflect poorly on the entire company if you, you can do the right thing in the wrong way, and that's what I'm saying. But like Nike doing the Juneteenth thing, that's a good step in as far as like a designer that's worked in offices. I'm like, okay, I like that. I respect that move more than like just some of this other shit I'm seeing. But it, it makes me, it also makes me feel like, you know, now they're just throwing anything so that way they don't be on the wrong side of the history books. Because yes. at, the end of the, at the end of the day, like you said, Chris, this is a perfect example. It's like, I've only, am, am I maybe 13 or 14, 13 years of, of Martin Luther King days and being an adult to work. I've only had one Martin Luther King day off. The other ones, it's, oh, it's option. If you, you know, you got to take a, a rolling holiday or you, you know, or it's just a regular day. Yeah. So, so I feel like there's, there was only one year that I worked a job where everyone got off from Martin Luther King day. And, you know, and, and, and that is, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, like, where was this before? Juneteenth is not, it's not like Juneteenth happened yesterday. I mean, it should happen. No, you're right. No. And you're you right. You're saying? right. It is, it is like a, is, I'm not going to call it like a, it's a play, but it's a good play. There's it's been a plenty of, yeah. It's just and there's, another band aid on, on the wound, and it's just, it's too big. The wound's too out big. Out of all the, what I'm basically saying is that all the things I've seen companies do in this moment, that one seems to more on the right side than the wrong side. But you're I, right. I think all these companies are, are doing the quote unquote right thing. I'm not like, there's not a move that I'm going to say a company's done. And you're like, oh, that's fucking wrong. Like they're all, but once again, I feel as if it is come, it is like, okay, like tomorrow because fucking no one wants to be looked at as in the history books as the fucking one who was like, fuck this shit. I mean, then tomorrow's going to be like, well, let's just give black people reparations because we just need to be right. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to be wrong. And I feel like I, 
I just feel like where was this five years ago? Where was this 20 years ago? Where was this? Thir- it was, it's almost like, like they see that people are fucking mad and, and yeah. then it, now it's like, well, we just have to do yeah. whatever makes people not mad. I think it's just because it, it, this is like, it was just the perfect storm. It's like you have, everybody's on the internet right now. Everybody saw the video. Everybody like everything that happened with the protests and every, and uh, and then we land here where everybody says now we got to change things and the news cycle is starting to dwindle on on all the events that are happening. Like they're not going to be talking about it as much anymore. So now everybody's going to be starting to keep a track on on these companies now because you know there are people who are just figuring out racism's bad, you know. And I think that like they're it's right. It's terrible. Why is he laughing? Dude, dude like, what, yeah, the fact that some people are going racism is bad now is yeah, bananas. But, but it's it's true. It's happening. It's, it's like there's a lot of people that it's happening with right now, and that's because there's a collective consciousness with the with the internet. Like Twitter gives voices to millions of people. It gives us eyes on everything that's happening in the cities, and the cities are retaliating and telling the people, we don't really care what you think, right? So now it's on these companies because we can't do as much with the government as we can with our companies. We can stop right. giving the companies money. We can't stop giving the government money. Otherwise, they'll, they'll lock us in jail. Mm-hmm. So I think that all these companies are in pins and needles because they need to be. Everyone just needs to follow what Ben and Jerry's does. Whatever Ben and Jerry's does as a company, you'll just follow that stance. Yes. Because <laughs> out of all the stances I saw, that it's shit the was one. the craziest. It's just, no, 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 black people, black lives matter. But not only that, we have to destroy everything, right? <laughs> we have to Yo, destroy, they, dismantle this shit. Did you see they made a new flavor? What is it? No. no. Pecan resist. No way. I'm Amazing. not joking. Okay, hold on. Amazing. Bro, Ben and Jerry's are the goat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did see these. Hold Yo, on. pecan resist. Look at these. This looks good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I'm hype. I don't even like ice cream. I'm about to buy a bunch of ice cream. I'm about to buy all the Ben and Jerry's too, man. I, I fucking, I, yo, I hate ice cream, but I started fucking with vegan ice cream. That shit is Ooh, fucking good. Ooh, I heard like, that shit's pretty good. I use the, I drink, I, I mean, I eat the cashew milk joints, the oh. uh, Van Luen's and, uh, and the shit called Soul Delicious. They have, yeah. like, it's fucking good. And yeah, dude, I'm, I'm like, real good. I'm not fucking with dairy like that anymore. I don't really like dairy. So I try to do the non-dairy. I options. think we're seeing the evolution of the kombucha reviews. I into mean, <laughs> ice cream reviews. <laughs> Yo, honestly, I'm keeping it hundred with you, man. I've been wanting to do so many reviews, but it's just like not right now. <laughs> Can't drop anything right now. Yeah, because any anything you would do, you'd have to like have this underlying thing of what's going on outside. Because yeah. other than mm-hmm. that, people would be like, "Why is he just talking about kombucha right now?" <laughs> yeah, zero out of five. Do dismantle the system. I know, right? That's <laughs> but, uh... everything gets zeros until until racism is dead. Van, yeah, but the Van Lu- Van Luines, and I'm fucking definitely. I was definitely gonna review some vegan ice cream. That's definitely oh, nice. hell yeah. So that's, that's up. Um, um, what else is there? Um, we got Chappelle special. Everybody saw Chappelle special. Yeah, which yeah. everyone, if if you haven't watched it, eight minutes, uh, forty three seconds, forty eight, eight forty six, eight forty six. If you haven't watched it yet, um, you should. Uh, yeah. It's not really a comedy special as much as it is a comedian being very smart, articulate, <clears throat> and um, with the strongest amount of presence I've ever seen. He's yeah. like he's a very like he's very good at weaving. I don't know, just like his his personal experiences with like the what's going on in the country right now, you know. Yeah, it was. It was some of it was some like especially like the first ten minutes were very strong comedically, and then once it started to like, like once you got settled in, you were like, mm-hmm. I'm here for it, all of it, you know, at this point. Cause yeah, it, just, he, it felt more of an experience than anything. Yeah, he's shown that Dave Chappelle has shown to everyone that he is the master uh, storyteller in terms of, like you said, being able to weave things in and out and and being able to put some type of bow on things that is very uh his is super unique and 
and you felt like it, it literally felt like he was speaking for how black people felt about everything that's going on. Yeah. And I, I, I loved it. It was great. Mm -hmm. um for the audience who may not know i now it seemed like that was him just trying to get some uh like trying to say it out loud in front of a crowd to see what would happen um now that every joke takes time we've all you know you have a thought you have to work with to a thought to joke um i hope he takes this as a base that he's not willing to throw away because he put it out on youtube because this with jokes is going to be the most amazing fucking thing yeah i don't know i don't know if it needs to to be honest yeah. it doesn't it, it doesn't but as a comic like when i was watching this i was like oh sh dude imagine if he worked on this for like a, i'm now that i'm being this is like a just a more of a comedy thing less about like the country and more about being a comedian you just imagine it. if <laughs> what i'm just saying it's a real thought as a joke writer i did <laughs> come on you guys didn't once think that the whole time you watched it? What, I didn't that, think he, about the fucking polish on the material. I think it was just a guy who went up on stage and was distraught with the country. Here's the order. I was like, wow, amazing thought. And that was crazy presence. And then it was like, holy shit, imagine if you worked on that. You're nuts. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. It would be very it would be very good and it would also be a year late. That's the problem. Well, that's the I think that's the big thing. I think the fact that he was able to release it. Uh, and immediately stuff yeah i mean which yeah. that you know no other comic has that is able to do that in terms of him being able to release something uh, uh two weeks after or you know th two and a half three weeks after everything has happened so yeah. um i i think that's what makes it, i mean he's to me i mean i've always said it, i think he's you know just one of the, the greatest i don't know wherever it, whatever your top three is he should be in there somewhere yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Louie didn't come out two weeks after he got exposed, he got me too and be like, hey, what's going on with everybody? You know? He didn't do that. Yeah. I, I think, but I think there's, you know, honestly, I think there's just an aura that about Chappelle that other comics just don't have. Like, he has mm -hmm. an aura. Yeah. You just want to listen to him. You want to listen. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, like I said, I mean, it, he was he was able to throw in a few jokes, you know the Azalea Banks, you know the joke which I was, did laugh at yeah, Azalea Banks. Funny. You know that I mean even the the part with Christopher with Chris Dorner where you know he he was like you know he mentioned him in the manifesto, but you know he also mentioned Kevin Hart yeah. like you know stuff like that or yeah that was fun. Where the police were like, hey, you know, would you, would you need some protection? He was like, nah, I think, you know, they just want you like you know what I mean like shit <laughs> yeah. like that. You know, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. So. He's wow. so good at being not only educational for people who don't know what he's talking about, but he doesn't seem like he's uh, trying to, like, talk down. No, yeah, exactly. He doesn't talk down to the audience, but he lets you know exactly what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Very Which is crazy. Um, there's also a thing that, like, uh, back when um, the Knitting Factory was, like, Kenny DeForest and Will Clark and these other guys, he like, there was a crazy tweet thread that Kenny did about a Chappelle story. So if you just Google, like, Chappelle, Kenny story, it will come up. But mm -hmm. that whole thing, like, back back years ago, he, Chappelle, Chappelle was talking to this stuff that he's talking about in this special. So if you watch the special and then go to that tweet thread, I'll actually, no, I'll put it in the description so it's easier for you guys. Um, that it's just a crazy parallel that he's been, he's been sitting on this for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, as he should be, should have, you know what I mean? Like he's been trying to speak about this for a while, but it's, it's good to see that he put it in a format that's, uh, consumable. Yeah. Uh, anything else today, guys? Yeezy's yeah. got, uh, Yeezy's got makeup now. Yeezy is trying to be the new Kylie and get his own makeup line. What? Why, Kanye? Because uh, I feel like he wants to wear eyeliner, and now he's in a good excuse. Oh, mm. my God. What is going on with this guy? <laughs> Stick to sneakers, man. I think you, Yo. you called it You called it last week, Lawrence. You were like, let's not sing Kanye's praises just yet. <laughs> yeah, let's – I mean, come on, man. You know he's always – I mean, but, you know, he's definitely trying to uh, – trying to be at – you know, trying to get that money, you know, it's – 
It's a uh, hold on. So he filed documents to trademark uh, Yeezy under various cosmetic products such as makeup, fa false eyelashes, facial masks, nail polish, moisturizers, bath gels, body oil, shaving cream, hair care products, and perfumes. Jesus Christ. So wait, hold on. I have uh, this very uh, detailed drawing uh, from Kanye's Twitter. So this is how he looks at his company, Yeezy. Yeah. Uh, so to even to to further break down the company, but um, more in a uh, whole in a just the whole company, not specifically the cosmetics, but he has food, clothing, shelter, and exposure. And then cosmetics is not even on here at all. <laughs> hmm. This is right off his Twitter. I mean, this right. is four years. This is two years ago, but it's like. You, Jesus Christ. That's nuts. He somehow, he somehow went from this in 2018 to, yo, I'm going to make lip gloss for dudes. Is it for dudes? Asking for a friend. <laughs> Not, for <me. laughs> Not for me. Oh, yeah, he's wild, man. Yeah, he's wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would... I actually don't have an answer if it's like if he's gonna make products for dudes because you know what's crazy is I don't think a lot of dudes are willing to admit this. I'll admit it right now. Like I went and bought expensive moisturizer the other day. Yo, I want my skin. I need my skin to look nice, dude. I'm starting to look old. Moisturizer's fine. Like yeah. everybody has. But then I can have now. the hype shit. Yeah, you get hype moisturizer. Yeah, <laughs> if if I if I could put big <laughs> moisturizer. <laughs> That's how some dudes are gonna think though. Like yo. I get to put Yeezy on my face. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> yep. We're, Gross. We're Let me put this Yeezy cream on my face. Gross, dude. We're definitely in a, in a time now where I think men are going to be more uh, more vocal about their facial uh, regimen and, and <laughs> skin Bro, when care. Frank Ocean said in that GQ article that he uses night cream, uh, I went to like 15 stores looking for night cream. And they were like, oh, you just watched, you just read that article. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I did. Yo, my, my girl been staying over here more than a usual, like, corona shit, whatever. Like, so, she, but she started bringing, like, yeah, you know, you're in the stage of the relationship where she starts having, like, her own, like, drawer or desk or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, they don't come over. <laughs> <laughs> yo, she got, like, her whole regiment, and, like, in the morning or night sometimes, I'll be like, yo, what's, the, what's this one do? What's this one do? Yo, she puts some of the shit on my face, man. I don't know if you can see it. I feel like I look great. <laughs> oh, I would put Yeezy on my face. <laughs> uh, if he I'm comes so out with some moisturizer, bro. Yo, if he comes out with some shit, where like my introduction to moisturizer was like when I was like 12 years old. My mom put like she put on moisturizer on my face because like I was I get like Filipinos get dry patches when they live in the states. We're not used to the cold weather, so we get dry patches. So they used to put moisturizer on my face. Then I found out later that it was actually whitening cream. And I was like, ooh, this is problematic. <laughs> oh, your mom's, your mom's trying to Sammy Sosa you? Yeah, she was trying. Whoa! <laughs> she was trying. Gee, that's hilarious. She, she was Damn. Like, she didn't realize how bad it was for me. Like, I have, like, scars on my face. Like, you notice, like, those two red scars, like, by my nose? That's from, mm -hmm. like, that's from, like, like, fucking uh, whitening cream. Damn, mm. bro. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. It's, 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 it's deeper, you know? It's, it's Yo. past deep, bro. But now you can up. wear Yeezy. Now I can wear Yeezy on my face. <laughs> now I can get Yeezy cream <laughs> all over my face. It's hilarious. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Oh, boy. Did you ever do that, Lawrence? Did you ever try to lighten your skin? Uh, I can't. <laughs> uh, oh. Mm. Good for you. Mm -mm. All right. So in conclusion. <laughs> easy. <laughs> easy. I, I, <laughs> Moisturizer. <laughs> easy on your face. Yo! Easy on your face. Wait, what else did he what else was in that breakdown, L? What was that? What else was in that shit? Lip gloss. Uh right? I can't even find it now. I just I think I got off of that. Yo. Yeah. Imagine dudes complaining about <laughs> not getting like the limited release glow in the dark Yeezy bath gels. 
Yo, man, I can't believe I can't believe I missed that that shock drop on those Yeezy eyelashes. <laughs> Yo, I didn't get the one that was reflective, but I just I got the regular one though, so at least I came out with something. Jeez. Now the re- now the resale game is gonna hit the the ladies' pockets. Oh, <laughs> that's dude. the game now. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Um, wait, I just had a thought. Ye hasn't really like collabs. He hasn't really like let other parties touch his shoes. Pause. Right. What do you uh, mean? You mean like other designers? Yeah, so there hasn't been any triple labels of his shit, right? Like, there's Adidas and Ye Easy. That's like the collab quote, right? Mm-hmm. But it, there, it hasn't been any third parties touching his shoes, right? No, that's, that's that's. I don't think too many designers really do that. It's not. No, like, I mean, it's not like a off white Nike. You know what I mean? Like bait. Like no, it's just usually. No. I mean the not the Nike shit's a little different because they they use like the in they usually use their own cast like they they had that Serena um off white Nike you know what I mean but you're saying like you don't see anybody like they're not even using Adidas guys to make not, Yeezys not that I've seen with the Kanye stuff but I was just thinking so like he uh, he easily got that from Kylie right like mm-hmm. Kylie made her cosmetic shit he probably saw the crazy markup he probably saw like the direct consumer, you ain't got a wholesale shit. Mm-hmm. If you got a name, you could just sell that shit. Cause that's cosmetics is a crazy shit because it takes dirt to make, mm-hmm. like actual dirt. <laughs> and mm-hmm. then you could sell it for a crazy markup because white girls are gonna buy it, right? Mm-hmm. right. Yay doing it. He's gonna have to have something else. The whole joke we've just been making for the past 10 minutes is easy on my face. Dudes aren't gonna really actually gonna want to do that. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Who's the yeah. call him with? I don't know. Uh, this is going to be – what a year, guys, honestly. This is mm-hmm. just <laughs> – Yeah. What a, what, a, what a crazy year. What a year so far. Uh, I mean, uh, I guess on that note, unless you guys got anything else, I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm straight. I'm good, too. Um, all right. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. What is, all right, so no final thoughts, right? Everybody anyway, follow. Do we, I mean, uh, it's supposed to be the Puerto Rican Day Parade this weekend, even though it's not really, but they, it is. So shout out to my Puerto Ricans. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Also, uh, there was that Puerto Rican Air Force One that got redacted. So anyone that gets one of those, that's a good come up. Good for you. Yeah, what mm-hmm. happened with those? They put the flag, flag on. The, yeah. yeah, the flag was wrong, so they recalled mm-hmm. them. But, you know, they only made for more money. Yeah. I don't, just, why, I don't know why they just Didn't don't they, own the mistake. This is the second year. I feel like this is the this is the move for Nike. They, like, Dude, the past they will, two years they've had shoes recalled. They had the 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 thirteen colonies one. Remember that one? Yeah, I remember that. Oh, they, they, yep. That was last year. Thirteen colonies one. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. There's that one, and then there's this one this year, and it's been back to back. I'm starting to think this is a trend. They're going to try to do something. Well, some... I mean, this one, they could have let go. Like, yeah. they could have played this up. Yo, they've been fucking up, like, all the shit. Like, the Nike versus the Jord- the Jumpman on the back of sneakers. They've been fucking that up. Yeah, like, man. but they still do it. Yeah. They fuck with us. Yo, yeah. just leave the fl- I don't know why you taking away it's, the fl- You know what I mean? It's artistic choice, <laughs> you know? You could even argue it's like, no, nah, we flipped it so, like, the, the viewer could see the flag in the right position. Like, there's plenty of other things you could have said. Why? Mm-hmm. Whatever. But, yeah, that's my final thought. That's actually a good point. <laughs> Shout out to all my freaking Ricans, though. Shout out to the Ricans. Or I don't feel like um, that's in good taste anymore. <laughs> I, I, I'm the bad guy anyway. I'm the face of evil, so that's I'll stick true. with it. You, you are know? our heel. You are the heel. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> the heel. <laughs> Totally are, Chris. <laughs> but either way, you can follow us at Not That Cheney, at LZD325, at Trevisus, at Sub Podcast NYC, uh, Sub Podcast NYC at Gmail. We got a Discord. Um, hop in, come through there. It's growing. It's nice. It's steady. It's always active now, which is fucking sweet. Um, you know, stay yeah. safe. Still wear mm-hmm. a mask. Uh, Black Lives fucking matter, of course, you fucking idiots. Uh, and I guess that's that. Yeah. All I right. got the antibodies though, so. Eh. <laughs> peace. <laughs> All right, peace, guys. Later.